in the top slot this time for the news. I broke 100 subscribers. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you very much. Technically, it's 101. I'd like to thank you all. And with that, on with the real news. Or, not real news. Okay, it is real news. On with the Linux news. There we go. Yeah, that's what I meant. Linux news. <laughs> Welcome back. It is sunny, it is above 80, and it is hot outside. So what do I so what do we do? I go out to my garage where my computer is and decide to do a video. It's even hotter in here. <laughs> okay, anyways. We're gonna do some Linuxy news on this one. It appears that the uh, 6.4 kernel is getting some more rust in it. New rust code for the Linux 6.4 includes the introduction of the pin in it API, which is unsafe. Rust, huh? <laughs> unsafe? Okay. Unsafe rust code within the kernel around data structures needing a stable address. The new pin in it API in turn will also be used by other upcoming rust for Linux abstractions. It also adds new types and traits to the sync module. A new IO control module with new IOC const, if I read that right, functions equivalent to the C macros, a new UAPI crate to be accessible by drivers directly and other improvements to existing modules slash crates. I'll leave the link below. They can read up on it and go to the poll request. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Oh boy, here they go. They're after Linux. RTM Locker's first Linux ransomware, ransomware strain targeting NASA and EX, ESXi host. Ah, oh, crap. Um, yeah, this looks pretty bad, guys. Uh, the threat actors behind RTM Locker have developed ransomware a ransomware strain that's capable of targeting targeting Linux machines, marking the group's first foray into the open source operating system. Why can't they just leave a good thing alone? Jesus Christ. It's like a ransomware infects Linux, NAS, and ESXi hosts, and appears to be inspired by Babak ransomware's leaked source code. Uptix said in a new report published Wednesday, it uses a com combination of ECDH and Curve 25519 asymmetric encryption and Kasha 20 symmetric encryption to encrypt files. I'll leave the link on that one. Y'all should read this. And another fun factor here is, uh, you scroll down a bit. You guys got to read this thing, man. This is bad. Uh, the Linux flavor is specifically geared to single out ESXi hosts by terminating all virtual machines running on a compromised host prior to commencing the encryption process. The exact initial infector employed to deliver the ransomware is currently unknown. Yay! Well, time to harden my machines. I don't think they're going after individuals, but, uh, yeah. I don't want to be messing around with my machines. It's not like I have anything important in there, but still. God. Alrighty, on to the next piece of news. Got another one for you guys. Duvon. The, uh, distribution that's split off from Debian because of the, uh, System D issue. 
This is about that one. A newly discovered security issue in Duvon's default installation allows for obtaining root privileges without a password. Ding, 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 ding. That's a good one. Duvon emerged in 2014 due to Debian's transition to System D following a long technical and widely publicized dispute. It is a System D free distro allowing users to choose between SysV init, OpenRC, and run it for their init systems. I'll leave the link for that one down below too. And here's one about sudo and su. Sudo and su being rewritten in Rust for memory safety. With the financial backing of Amazon Web Service, sudo and su, su, sudo and su, or su, are being rewritten in the Rust programming language in order to increase the memory safety for the widely relied upon software. A team from Ferio Systems and Tweed Golf, with financial support from AWS, have begun rewriting SU and sudo and Rust for Rust 2, rather, further enhanced Linux slash open source security. There's links so you can go read the full article and all that good stuff and the group that's doing it down below. Have you ever sat around watching a movie or heard a song on the radio or on the internet live feeds and you didn't know the artist or the name of the song well guess what Mousia is a song recognition app for Linux built in GTK4 Libabwada and Rust it uses the AUDD song recognition API to match the music you ask it to listen to with songs to establish work Mousy is a song recognition app for Linux built in GTK4 on Libowata and Rust. It uses the AUDD song recognition API to match the music you ask it to listen to with songs to establish to work. Basically, Mousia, I hope I'm saying that right, is Shazam for Linux. And I'll leave that link down below so you can read that one too. This one's a little bit older, but it came out on the 23rd of April. Shotwell, Shotwell photo app now supports AVIF, HEIC, and WebP. A new version of Linux Photo Manager and Image Editor Shotwell is available to download. Shotwell 0.320 is the first major release of the app since last year, though the late, last stable release appears to have been back in December of 2020. Developer, developers have duly gifted the photo organizer some notable new features bug fixes, and enhancements in that intervening time. What are the biggest ones, you ask? Well, Shotwell now supports more image formats. This includes AVIF, HEIF, HVEC, HEIC, which will be familiar to iPhone users, as well as JPEG, XL, CR3, and the increasingly ubiquitous WebP. And I'll leave the link down below so you can finish reading that one. And last but not least, Clonezilla, at the end of last month, had a release. Well, the Clonezilla Live 3.1.0-22 released. Which is synced with the Debian SID repository. The new version is powered by Linux kernel 6.1. 0.25 LTS and introduces a new option for the VG change command. The new release also includes new versions of several several components, including EZIO, EZIO, and Memtest 86 Plus. And I'll leave a link for that article. There's a uh, good good amount of changes in there. I'll just poke a couple out here. Uh, the kernel was updated to 6.1.25-1. Include package dbtm, detach, functions, checks if disk busy and is partition of OCS functions were improved. Fake slash firmware raid support should be improved as well. And there's links to the official page and etc, etc, etc. And that's it for this one. If you're outside and you're somewhere where the sun is shining, enjoy the rest of your day or night depending on what time and where you are. Take it easy. Have a good one. I'm out of here.